Nix ecosystem is all about packages, and if you've ever been on NixOS Discourse or the official wiki, you've undoubtedly encountered these two words, overrides and overlays, which presumably allow you to customize packages and even extend entire Nix packages itself. But the question is, why would you ever want to use them, or more importantly, how would you use them? And so in this video, I'll answer these and many more overlay and override questions, so without further ado, let's get straight to configuration. Starting with override, or more specifically, override and override attributes, because both of these are actually two distinct functions that do completely different things. If we take a look at some random package in Nix packages, it will most likely be defined in a following way. A function with a single parameter containing all dependencies at the top, and a builder function, most commonly make derivation, that takes a set containing package dependencies and instructions on how to build it. Of course, depending on where you look, you may see a package built with a different function, or even a set containing multiple packages, but this right here is just a minimal version of the GNU Hello World program, which is so simple, it only has the source code defined here, and the rest is handled by make derivation. And so the reason a function with dependencies is used is because it allows us to decouple any package from Nix packages and use it on its own, provided that we have dependencies to pass to it. But of course, no sane person would actually go and package every dependency on their own, because at that point they'd be creating another Nix packages. Which is exactly why we can use the Nix packages .call package function. As you can see, it comes from Nix packages itself, and it allows us to pass all requested dependencies from Nix packages to such function. It also lets us override them within this set right here, so if I for some reason wanted to replace stdenv with gcc7 stdenv, I could simply do it like this. But also, you'll notice that aside from general dependencies, some packages will come with predefined arguments of some boolean or string type, which can be easily overridden to influence the package. Like in this example, where we have a Wayland support boolean set to false by default, and an x11 boolean also set to false. Meaning we can freely override them in the set that comes after a call package, and conditionally get a package with or without certain features whenever we need it. So in case of this package, which is a Rofi wrapper for Bitwarden, we'll get extra dependencies like xclip or vlclipboard, which allow the program to interact with x11 or Wayland clipboard respectively. But let's be honest, unless you are working with your own packages, most of your packages are going to come to you in the usual packages.package name form. And to overwrite arguments passed to these, we can simply use the override function like this, which basically works the exact same way. The parameter passed to the override function can also be a function itself, which allows us to access the original arguments in case we want to modify them directly. Like in this example, where we are taking one of the original dependencies and also overriding it before passing it to this package. Now overriding the arguments is cool, but what if some package simply does not expose any arguments that you might need, or even straight up misses some functionality that can be achieved by building it in a different way? Well, in that case, most builder functions allow us to use the override attributes function, which unlike regular override, overrides the set passed to the builder function itself. Which can be particularly useful if you want to add some build dependencies, include additional build command arguments, or even completely replace the source code. Meaning you don't have to manually maintain any forks, and the packages you override this way will still receive all the updates in case the build process changes for the original package. And if you want some examples, you'll find plenty of them straight in Nix packages, like Rofi and Rofi Wayland. The regular Rofi package only works on X11, and as you can see, it has quite a big derivation with many build steps and dependencies. But if we take a look at the file of Rofi Wayland package, we'll see that it uses the override attributes of the original package to only change a couple of attributes and keep everything else. Its src attribute is replaced with a Rofi fork that contains some Wayland patches, and of course, we can see a bunch of new Wayland dependencies in the build inputs right here. Notice that to access the original set, the Wayland version once again passes a function to override attributes, and just like with regular override, this allows us to access the build inputs from the original set, and later use the plus plus operator to concatenate them with new dependencies. So if the regular Rofi package ever gets new dependencies, they will be automatically inherited by the Rofi Wayland package without any additional work for its maintainers. 
But beware that customizing packages this way will technically give you a completely different package, meaning that packages that have to be compiled from source may take longer time to build and won't benefit from Nix packages binary cache. Alright, so we now know how to customize packages, but let's learn how we can customize entire Nix packages. And to do it, we are going to use overlays, which true to their name, allow us to overlay functions over the original Nix packages to change the packages and functions within it. There are many ways to apply overlays to Nix packages depending on where you have it in your Nix projects, so first, let's imagine we have a basic flake with a single Nix packages input and try to apply several overlays to it. To do it, let's first create an instance of Nix packages by importing it inside of the latent in expression with the system option set to your system architecture. Afterwards, we can add an overlays attribute to it, which is going to be a list where we can put as many overlays as we want. Every Nix packages overlay consists of a two-parameter function that returns a set, where the first parameter is conventionally called final and the second one is called prev for previous. I like to explain these in a following way. The final parameter is Nix packages that you get after modifying your previous Nix packages with your overlay. And the set it returns is basically your Nix packages content. So if we were to add some attribute, like my cool attribute equals 5 here, we would later be able to access it from the resulting Nix packages instance. This of course means we can use this set to override packages contained in Nix packages, so here I am assigning Rofi RBV to the overridden version of it that we were talking about earlier. And to do it, I am referencing the previous version of Nix packages where it is still not overridden. I can also add some different attribute here and assign it to Rofi RBV package from the final Nix packages, which is going to be this one right here. Meaning if we later try to access Rofi RBV or Rofi RBV custom from this Nix packages instance, we will get our overridden version both of the times. It is also possible to override nested attributes, like ones located in lib, node packages or vim packages, but to do it without throwing out the entire scope, we can use the special override scope function. Just like overlays itself, override scope also takes two parameters and returns a set that we can use to extend the scope. By adding an additional attribute here in this example, we will later be able to access it from node packages of this instance. And now, let's finally apply overlays to Nix.js or Home Manager. And doing it is actually extremely simple. Because all it takes is adding them to the nixpackages.overlays option. This will apply the overlays to your primary Nix packages instance, so you'll find your changes in the packages parameter of every module allowing you to extend Nix packages however you like, and then access your changes from any module. But you know what else you should extend? Your knowledge and learning skills. And there is no better way to do it than with the sponsors of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is an incredible learning platform offering beautiful interactive lessons crafted by experts from MIT, Google, Microsoft and more that cover a wide range of topics from math and engineering to computer science. I've recently been using it to catch up with some math, and I'm certain you can agree with me that it is a far better use of your spare time than scrolling through social media. And by investing just 15 minutes of your time each day with Brilliant, you too will learn something new every day and soon get into a habit of taking small steps towards eventual great progress. Brilliant will of course help you with that, because it is specifically designed to help you get used to learning stuff and most importantly, thinking like a problem solver, not just a memorizer. So start your 30 day free trial now at brilliant.org slash vimjoyer and enjoy a lifetime 20% discount on Brilliant Premium. And now I'd like to thank everyone who supports the channel and keeps it going, more specifically, Hoskins, Lasselus, Olaf K. Freund, not a Nut, Xavier, Albert C, P3N, T Boltmall, Shen, Z, Workflow, Zach Beer, This is Liam, Much to Less, Bastian Asmussen, Allergic Duck, Nemo, BOFH, Zamino, Aruno Ruto, Veronico, Fire Squid 6, Lucian Thor, Tim LePace, Fernando Alex, GNRLVCNT, and anonymous donations.
As usual, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video, or subscribe if you're feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.